Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Glock Model 22 and 40 caliber. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. I'm Ed Thorell for Firearms Education and Training, and we're glad you're sticking with us and you came back to watch some more videos. If you like what you see, hit the share button as well as the like. More importantly, also subscribe, and that way you'll be able to get notification every time we have a new video. If you really like what we're doing, come find us on Patreon and partner up with us. So we've had a lot of requests to do more videos on Glocks, so we're answering those requests by showing you what you want. And today we're going to spend some time talking about the Glock 22 and 40 caliber. But just like we always do, we want to start by showing clear and safe. We can have a nice little conversation, no bangs, no big surprises. Now, the Glock 22 is the 40 caliber version, a little bit larger than the original Model 19. And let's talk a little bit about the Glock. Um, they were one of the first to come on the market with a, a composite frame. And uh, originally, uh, Glock, before it started making handguns, was making things out of high-impact plastics. Believe it or not, they started off making curtain rods. Um, they also, for the Austrian military, were building knives. They were also building entrenching tools. And the reason that you get the Glock models that you do is based on their patent number, which means the Glock 19 was the 19th patent that Glock had registered. So same with the Model 22. This is the 22nd patent that Glock has put out. So if it seems like their model numbers are kind of arbitrary, they're doing it by patent number. So that makes a little bit more sense. Now, the Glock 40 is very popular with law enforcement. The, the 40 caliber came out after um, trials that happened with ammunition following the Miami shootout in 1988. So by 1990, the FBI was testing new rounds, the 9, the 45, and they were even checking out the 10 millimeter. And they came up with a shortened version of the 10 millimeter that became the 40. So the 40 was actually a purpose-built law enforcement round that was meant to combine the best of the 9 and the 45. And that's something that's done really well. Um, keep in mind, though, that well, one thing that the 40 is known for is having more snap. Um, it's going to have a different style of recoil that's going to be much snappier than the 9mm or the 45. Um, I would probably compare it to something like the 357. So if you're looking at the uh, the curve in terms of felt recoil it's not a straight curve it goes from the 9 to the 40 and then drops down to the 45 so you're going to expect more recoil with the 40. Now with the earlier generations of the Glock the ones that came to America the Gen, th the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 they have a single spring recoil system you're going to see that that's later improved in the Gen 5, which is going to help mitigate some of the recoil. But on the earlier ones, they come stock with a single recoil spring, which means you're going to have more felt recoil in the earlier generations. But aside from that, you're going to notice that the earlier generations, like the Gen 3, comes with the finger grooves. The Gen 2 does not. The Gen 3 also comes with the rail for mounting a light or a laser, the Gen 2 does not. The one thing, you know, the Gen 2 gets released to America first because one of the things that the, uh, the government required with the difference between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 is the Gen 2s and the Gen 3s were the first one that come with the uh, serial number molded right into the frame. Uh, you'll also notice that, you know, the very stock version has kind of a squared off magazine release. It also does not come with a beaver tail. So with these, you need to be very conscious of your grip. If you grip it too high, you might get bit. There's, uh, there's off-brand uh, uh, accessories that you can get that'll 
that will, uh, you can add a beaver tail, but if you're looking at just a stock gun, they do not come with them. Now, the nice thing about the 40 is that um, it is actually what I would refer to as a chassis. With the 40 caliber, you can actually turn this into a multi-caliber handgun because with the 40, you can also drop in a 357 SIG barrel and magazine, or you can drop in a 9mm barrel and add a different magazine, which gives you the versatility of being able to have one firearm that will handle three different loads. So, very popular with law enforcement. They were able to sell a bunch of those because you could pretty much craft it to the, um, to the task. Um, it comes with the standard Glock sights, a white dot with a uh, white outline. Some people really like them. I prefer a three dot, but there's some people that love them and do great with them. If you like those sights, you can keep your sights. Anyway, it's a great pistol. And in a few minutes, we're gonna run some rounds through it so you can see how it handles. So stick around. On behalf of Shoot of the Series, we wanna thank you all for watching and tuning in. If you really like what we're doing, come find us on Patreon and consider partnering up with us. All right, well, before we put any rounds down range, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on the capabilities of this particular Glock, the Glock 22, being a multi-caliber pistol. And today what we've got is a 40 caliber, bull, a 40 caliber barrel, as well as a 357 SIG barrel. And the beauty of these is the fact that dimensionally, the cartridges are close enough that you can actually use the same rounds out of one single magazine which means all you really have to do is switch out the barrel to make it all go. That'll save you a few bucks and uh, less magazines to fumble back through. So anyway, we're gonna start off by putting a few rounds of through the 40 through it, just so you can see how it handles, and then we'll do a switch. You can see how easy it switches out. All right. Glock 22, 40 caliber. All right, we're clear, we're safe. All right, to break down the Glock, take it out of battery just a little bit. Take your thumb and forefinger, push down the um, release pins. It'll slide forward, pull the trigger, it releases the slide. Remove the spring, remove the barrel, Add the 357 barrel, replace the spring. From there, line it back up. All right, that being said, you can watch me load the magazine. We're just gonna do five, just to show you how it functions. There's five, all right. Glock 22. Firing 357 SIG. All right, we're safe, we're clear, we're good to go. If you're looking for more information on the products that we've talked about, you can go to the information box below and check out the links. Once again, for Shoot of the Series, I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Y'all take care.